faithful Over and over Oh God of Abraham The God of covenant And faithful promises and Time and time again You have proved You'll do just what you say Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. Sun to the setting, sing I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Oh, great is your faithfulness, Father. You never change, you never change. Well, let's sing. Yeah. God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Yeah. Your history can prove there's nothing you can do. You're faithful and true. And though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my
Maybe you're familiar with this story, and maybe you're not, and that's okay. But there's a man named Job that we can read about in the Bible, and honestly, it could raise a lot of questions if, if you don't truly understand the depths of, of how our faith and how God works within us, because what you'll read is that there's a fight between Satan and God over this righteous man. And, and it sounds pretty crazy, but God says to Satan, this man right here, he's walking the line. He's, he's doing things right. I have truly blessed him. But you know what? I give you free reign to tempt him, to try him, to beat him down. And that sounds very cruel. But I hope you're encouraged today and that you can find the reason in your heart of why God would allow that to happen to Job and maybe apply that to your life. And maybe you've felt like God is allowing things to come into your life that just don't seem fair, it doesn't seem right. But I'm just here to tell you that while Satan is trying to break you, God wants to make you. He wants to make you into something much stronger than you are at this current point. And that only happens through trial, through perseverance, through faith, through trust, through hope. So will you believe these words with us? That no matter what, we'll still bless the name of Jesus. No matter what, I'll still bless the name of Jesus. I trust you, Lord. Can we sing? I'll still bless you. I'll still bless you. Come on. I'll still bless you. I'll still bless you. Right now where you're at, sing that. I'll still bless you. Oh, we sing, Lord. I'll still bless you. When we don't feel like it, I'll still bless you. Come on, there's power. I'll still bless you. There's power in this faith right here. Come on, say. I'll still bless you. I'll still bless you. I'll still bless you. Oh, in my heart, I'll still bless you. Oh, in my soul, Lord. I'll still bless you. I believe your plan for me. I'll still bless you. Oh, I'll still bless you. I'll still bless you.
declare today that we won't stop that you are worthy of every praise we can give you God forever in debt to your grace your endless grace abundant grace thank you for that grace God for through which we can live in a freedom that honestly we can't even fully comprehend God Stir that up in our hearts today, Jesus. And as we sense your spirit in those facts, would you help us to grow, help us to step closer to you, God. For we want to be world changers. We want to be difference makers for you. So God, we pour out and we pour out and we pour out. And I pray, God, that you'll just continue to fill Just continue to feel, God, as we sacrifice, as we put you first, God, as we put the mission, the gospel first, continue to fill us, God. I pray blessings upon our church, upon your people, as they pour out. Will you just continue to pour into us, God? Prepare our hearts as we hear your word today, God. We love you, and we praise you, and thank you. And I pray all this. In Jesus' name, amen. We do have incredible musicians at Highlands, and uh, if you make your way to one of our physical locations, you never know who you'll see. Uh, in fact, sometimes you might even see me on stage, or Tim. Hey, yeah. A few weeks ago, Tim was at our Bluefield campus. Play, did you play acoustic guitar? Uh, acoustic guitar, yeah. I, I, sometimes I show up and play guitar, sometimes uh, I run sound. Who knows where we're gonna be, right? Uh, our church is full of incredible people who really have a heart for ministry and want to take those steps to follow Jesus. Speaking of taking next steps, 
If you're interested in taking a step this year, it's a brand new year, it's an opportunity for you to grow, and one way that you can grow is by signing up to serve or volunteer with us. And if you wanted to do that, there's a great place, and I bet you already know exactly where that is. Tim, where could we go? Go to the hub. It's you a can. brand new year, but we're still gonna go to the hub. <laughs> new year, same hub, yep. right? It's still a great place for content, and maybe that step for you is serving, like we said. Maybe that's to participate with us in generosity. Highlands is such a generous church. Your generosity and your engagement and your involvement, your contribution to what God is doing here is what makes that possible. If you wanna do that, it's so easy. Go to the hub. You can click on the little button that says give, there's a pop-up there. You can give in like 10 seconds, and it really does make an eternal impact. And we are so grateful for all of you who do that. Yep. Uh, that's just one one story of like, we could we could sit here and do this whole gathering of stories that happened over the last few months from Difference Maker to our Christmas series. Uh, but we're not gonna do that yet, but we will share plenty of stories in the days to come. Today is a brand new message with Pastor Allen and our brand new 90 day through the New Testament reading that we're all gonna do together. He's gonna share about that. And then we're gonna be back after his message to tell you how you can sign up to be a part of that. So stick around and we'll see you in a little while. Well, hey there, man, my name's Alan Jesse and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel, which I know is a little crazy, but anyway, I thought about doing this. I wanted to give you some reviews and I thought could be helpful to you. So today what I want to do, most of you know I golf, and one of the things that's really important to a mediocre golfer and a great golfer, which I'm not, is gloves, right? I mean, you know we got to have some gloves. So I've got some gloves. So uh, I'm going to start with this TaylorMade. It's, it's extremely comfortable, and it seems actually like this is going to improve my game. I feel like I could grip the club well. I could swing well with it. So I, I would say right out of the gate without hitting any balls yet that this TaylorMade glove is probably one I would consider. And let's go to this one. This was the most expensive one. Titleist, obviously a big name. They sell more golf balls than anybody. This one, you know, it's not going on near as easy as the other. Maybe Titleist wants to do that a little bit, but so I don't know. It's it's actually a little tight. Uh, actually, it's it's a lot tight. Uh, well, I don't know what to say here. This one is really well. It's, it's almost like it's stuck to my hand. I I can't. What is the deal? I cannot, I don't even have, there is not enough room even to, I don't know what to do here. Maybe, maybe this thing, maybe, maybe this could help me. I don't even know how it works. But anyway, if I put that on, if I try to get, ah, if I could get that, I do not know what to do. This glove, I probably, if I was gonna get the Titleist, I would go up a size. I'm just telling you right now, I'd get one size larger. I didn't know how to get it off my hand. Brenda, can you? Sometimes she helps me get out of messes like this. Well, again, I don't know exactly. Hold on, I got, I, I got an idea. Okay, guys, I thought I can't cut the thing off, so it's cut my skin, so I've heard this before. And uh, you may know too. I mean, if so, let me know down in the comment section. I'm gonna take some butter. And this is crazy, but I'm gonna try to get some of this butter out of here. I'm gonna try to slide this butter. Let's see. Let me see if it. Oh my goodness. I do not know how I'm gonna get this off of it. But that. Okay, let me try something else. Butter's not gonna work. All right, I came up with another idea. I thought, just, you know, gosh, I gotta get this glove off. So I thought, I'm gonna, I've seen this on YouTube channels before. So I've got this little torch. I think I can get it going here. Oh, there we go, there we go. I thought, actually what I thought I could do is just burn it off. I mean, just start it at the end down here where the butter was and just start it at the end and get it sort of melty and then just rip it off really quick before I get burnt. I think what I could do is maybe warm the butter. It's already in there. It's already, I feel it in the palm of my hand. And if I held my hand way out here and just gradually brought my hand toward it, then I think that the butter could actually warm up and make it more slick and I could gradually get, I could gradually. Uh, uh, you're probably just gonna have to get used to seeing me wear this glove the rest of my life. So it looks like anyway.
Well, hey everybody, man, I want to welcome you today. So glad you're here, and I'm not sure where you are. Maybe you're in your living room. Maybe you're you know, at home, at the office today. I'm not sure. But a lot of you are in one of our in-person locations, and many of you are watching on TV today. So I just want to say, you guys, you're incredible. You are incredible. Thank you so much from you that watch on TV and you that are so faithful online. All the notes, all the encouragement, all the cards that I received over the last few weeks and your generosity toward the end of last year, it was amazing. It was off the charts. So thank you for believing in what God's called us to do as a church. 2022 is going to be awesome. Now, one of the reasons it's going to be awesome is because we are asking you to join with us starts today right the new testament challenge we're going to read through the new testament in 90 days i know already tons of you have signed up we want thousands of you to sign up because that keeps our church supernatural right so do it with me i'm going to do it with you we're going to go every step of the way we'll be right beside you and we're all going to journey through the new testament together and learn more about jesus about the apostle paul the disciples we're going to go in depth in the stories. It's going to be so, so good. And over the next couple of months, all the way up to these 90 days, really three months from now, we're going to be teaching out of the New Testament. So as you're reading, we're going to be teaching and sort of bringing that to life for you and helping you to understand it deeper. So today, if you haven't already signed up, I know many of you have, sign up today. It's going to be really, really fun. It's going to help you. It's going to make you better. Let's do 90 days in the New Testament. So, hey. I get to kick off a brand new series that we're starting called Influencer. Now, uh, this sort of came to me a few months ago. Uh, many of you know I enjoy playing golf. I'm not great at it, but I enjoy the game. And it takes me back to a beautiful fall Sunday afternoon. My favorite time to play is uh, sort of my downtime. I preach the message. And before the new week kicks off, I generally go out and I get with some buddies and we'll play around the golf. And I was with one of my good, good friends and a guy that I played, I don't know, hundreds of rounds of golf with. And uh, he brought this conversation to me. And he said, you know, Alan, have you ever thought that when you look back over your life, honestly, you're probably the result of three to five major decisions that you made when you approach these forks in the road in your life. And he said, you know, I was thinking about that the other day, and he said, I look back on my life, and he said, people asked me, well, how did you get to be where you are? And he said, honestly, it was when I look back, I could have chosen to go left or right, I made the decision, and as I made the decision, I ended up being the result of those decisions that I made. And man, when he told me that, uh, it caused me just to think my life's the same way. I mean, we either make decisions when we get to those forks in the road that lead our life to a good path, or it can lead our life down a bad path, right? And I think if you looked back over your life, it's not a hundred decisions, right? It's just those three or four major influences, major decisions, and all of a sudden we decided to go this way and we are the result of those decisions today. I have not been able to get that conversation off my mind. I think about it all the time. And that's how I wanna kick off this influencer series. So I want to ask you a quick question, all right? So play along with me here. All of our locations, I want you to do this, even if you're at home or on TV. Hey, how many of you would say that you're an influencer? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, how many of you, like here, would you just raise your hand? Would you slip your hand up? Would you say, you know what? I think I'm an influencer. Well, a couple of you are thinking you're influencers. Well, here's the goal. My goal today and really throughout this entire series, is to help all of you realize, every one of you, that you are actually influencers. You really are, you are an influencer. So here's the key takeaway. Uh, you know, when you go off the parking lot today, I want you to be thinking about this. I hope this sinks in your heart. I want you to embrace the reality of this truth. And here it is. You have no idea how one conversation one word of encouragement, 
one expression of love might change someone's life. I'll think about that, all right? You have no idea how God might use one word, one moment, one generous expression of love in the life of another person to actually help them experience a better life, to help them experience the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. Now, when I asked you a little earlier, how many of you see yourself as an influencer? Most of you didn't raise your hand. That didn't surprise me at all. Uh, it really did. I sort of thought you probably felt that way. But I did a little research uh, in getting ready for the message over the Christmas break, and uh, I've tried to define what influencer means today in our culture, all right? So if you were to look at what the word influencer is defined as in the culture in which we live today, here's the answer to that. An influencer is an individual who has the power to affect purchase decisions of others because of their authority or their knowledge or relationship with their audience. Now, that's what our culture says an influencer is today. And when I read that, and it's over and over and over, you go to the internet, you can search and find the same thing. I thought, really? I mean, really? Is that what an influencer is? I'm so confused. Now, I know I'm a little older than most of you, but hey, when I was growing up, an influencer was a teacher. An influencer was a coach. An influencer was an awesome parent, you know? An influencer was a good friend. Uh, when I grew up, an influencer, somebody had an influence on me. I think one of the reasons I'm in the mission, when I was a kid, uh, a guy who taught Sunday school, and my parents didn't take me to church, and this guy would come by, and he would pick me up, and he would take me to his Sunday school class week after week after week. That dude was an influencer. And today, unfortunately, I think culture has hijacked the term and many people would say, well, an influencer is a celebrity. An influencer is one of those content creators, somebody who's amassed a great number of followers on social media. That's what our culture says an influencer is. And so what I want to try to do is I want to try today to reclaim the word influencer for its original intention. And I want you to see yourself as an influencer because, again, and you'll hear me say this over and over, you have no idea how our God could use one word of encouragement that you might speak into the life of somebody else, one moment, one expression of faith and love that could eventually change somebody's life forever. Now, for those of you that know Jesus... You're here today and you've stepped across the line of faith and you're a follower of Jesus. I want to show you exactly what Jesus says you are, all right? We looked a little bit at this in our series leading up to Christmas. But he uses two metaphors, again, in Matthew's gospel. And in chapter 5, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. This is to every follower of Jesus. If you're a Christian today, you're the salt of the earth. What does salt do? Salt purifies, salt preserves. Salt adds flavor, right? We know what salt does. And then he goes on to say, you are also the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people put a light under a, you know, under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everybody in the house. So Jesus says, you're salt. And he says, you are light. And in the same way, Jesus says, that we as followers of him, we are to let our light shine. We are to influence others. We are to influence people toward a relationship, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So he says, let your light shine that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So let's just agree. Let's reclaim the true meaning of what it means to be an influencer. Again, I think culture has stolen that and somehow lapped it up with our social media. And if you have a bunch of followers and you can influence somebody to buy a t-shirt, then that's how our culture sees the influencer. That's not what the Bible teaches. It's so different than that. And the problem with our current view of influence is that it typically starts with a platform. 
And when we start with platforms, that's, that's never a good ending. Uh, it's often the size of your platform that determines in our culture the scope of your influence. Now, I think truthfully, it starts with something way, way different. I believe that true and lasting influence always starts with people, not platform. It always starts with people. And the good news is that all of you have people in your sphere of influence that you come in contact with, some every day, some once a week, but there are common people that all of us have in our sphere of influence. And you, according to Jesus, you're called to be an influencer. You're called to be salt and light to those people. Now, here's what I hope you'll understand. Influence isn't always obvious, okay? I mean, we know this, don't we? Uh, influence isn't always instant. Uh, just because you don't see a harvest overnight doesn't mean that the seeds that you're planting, that you're influencing in other people's lives aren't taking root. Again, think about this. You have no idea how God might use you in one moment to plant a seed that will eventually grow into real and lasting influence in the life of somebody some person that you love, that you care about. In fact, I want to show you a story today, perhaps my favorite story in all the scripture, of a most unlikely influencer in the New Testament. All right, the story is one I've taught on many times, find it over in John chapter 4. It's about a woman that ain't nobody ever thought would have any influence at all, all right? The content of this story is Jesus is on a trip and he's on this journey and the, the Bible says that he has a need that he's going to pass through Samaria, which in and of by itself was an unusual choice. Now, the disciples would have never expected Jesus to go through Samaria. Again, if you've heard me teach on this, just bear with me. It might be somebody that hadn't heard this. But here's the deal. Jews did not interact with Samaritans. Jesus is a Jew, right? And Samaritans, according to the Jewish culture of the day, they were half Jewish and half Gentile. The Jews hated the Samaritans. Matter of fact, Jewish, true Jewish people believed that Samaritans were less than human. They even put them as worse than dogs. That's how they treated them. You would never interact with a Samaritan if you were a devout Jew, especially, all right? I mean, I mean especially a Samaritan woman. I mean, I mean, if you were a Jewish male, uh, it, it was just unheard of that you would interact with a Samaritan woman. Well, once again, what does Jesus do? He shocks everybody, and he comes to this well, and he sets down at a well in the middle of the day in order to rest, and who comes by? A Samaritan woman, and she comes up to the well, and what does Jesus do? He interacts with her, and the first thing he does is say, hey, would you give me a drink? And I really believe what he's doing to this woman who's been beat down and shunned and oppressed her entire life, Jesus is actually dignifying her by starting a conversation. And you can imagine, I mean, she never had this happen before. She's completely thrown off guard. Scripture says in verse 9, the woman was surprised. She's shocked. I mean, honestly, guys, she's overwhelmed. She's beside herself. She never expected this. It's unheard of. No Jewish man would ever approach and have a conversation with a Samaritan woman. And it's just weird. I mean, it's just bizarre. And she's so surprised, she's shocked that Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. So look at the story. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew. You know, it's like, wait a minute, help me here. <laughs> I know you're a Jew. Hey, I'm a Samaritan woman in case you're blind or something, in case you didn't realize why are you asking me for a drink? You're not supposed to do that. And I love, right at the beginning of the story, I love how Jesus treats her. He replies to her with love. Uh, he does. Uh, you can just sense his compassion for her. And this is what he says. He says, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. 
Well, it sort of piques her interest, you know. He doesn't treat her like every other Jew has treated her all of her life. He actually dignifies her by having a conversation. She's a little bit intrigued by it, and she's confused as well. And notice what she says. She says, sir, I want you to see the progression that she sees Jesus. First of all, she sees him as a Jew, right? And then he treats her with respect, and she automatically calls him sir. He's beginning to move up in her life. Sir, but you don't even have a bucket. You know, you're wanting a drink. You don't even have a bucket here. The well is deep. Now, why did she say that? Because she had a bucket. She brought a water pot because... She knew it would be an insult to a Jewish man if she were to use her water pot. I mean, he, he had to have his own water pot. And he's asking for a drink. He doesn't have anything to get it out of. He says, well's deep. How in the world am I going to get you water that you would actually drink that wouldn't be poisoned because I have touched it? And Jesus replies, verse 13. He says, anyone who drinks of this water, he's talking about the well water, the natural water, will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink of the water I give will never be thirsty again. And this woman, man, she's sort of captivated by Jesus. She notices something's truly different about him. And she says, please, sir, may I have some of that living water? And notice what Jesus says in verse 16. He, had, he, he, he helps her understand where she's at in life. And he says, I want you to go and I want you to get your husband. And she says, well, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband for you've had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man that you're living with now. Now, I don't know how he said that, but he said it in a way that didn't offend her. He said it in a way somehow it convicted her. And she said, you certainly spoke the truth sir, the woman said. Now catch this. She says, you must be a prophet. She's seen him as a Jew. Then she saw him as sir. He begins to tell her about her whole past. She'd never seen this man before. Oh my goodness. You must be a prophet. Now there wasn't a Jewish man anywhere who would have interacted, had a conversation with this woman. But Jesus approaches her with love in his heart. He dignifies her. You know what he really does? He honors her all the time knowing that she was an outcast in her own community. Divorced five times and she's shacking up now. Hey, even in our day, in a culture as far away from God as we become, she would still raise some eyebrows in our day. But guys, let me tell you something. In that day... She would have been shunned. I mean, she would have been the woman that everybody sort of whispered about. Hey, you better stay away from her. Hey, you better keep your husband away from her. She's a home wrecker. That's what she is. She's nothing but bad news. And think about this. Jesus, knowing all of that, he doesn't look at her as this immoral woman. But instead, he looks at her as a miracle waiting to happen. That's our Jesus, isn't it? Knowing that a touch from heaven, knowing that forgiveness could be applied to her heart and she could completely change. And it dawns on her, wait a minute, hey, wait a minute. We, we've heard that there would be a Messiah coming one day. I, I've heard perhaps about this man and he's going to come and he's going to be our Messiah and he's going to do miracles and he's going to raise the dead and he's going to open blind eyes. Why would a Jewish man speak to me, show me honor and respect and know everything about my life? And here's her conclusion. Perhaps this is the one that we've been waiting for. This is the one that we've been praying for. Perhaps this is the Messiah. And you know what she does? She leaves her water pot, which was one of her most prized possessions. And she is transformed by the love of Jesus. And she becomes a believer and a follower of Jesus at that point. And the scripture says she runs back to her village. The Bible says it like this. The woman left her water jar beside the well 
and ran back to the village. And notice what she does, man. She tells everybody, everybody she comes in contact with, hey, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he possibly be the Messiah? You got to come. You got to go meet this guy that I've met that's forgiven me and that has given me a new future story. So what happened? Well, people came streaming out from that village to see Jesus. Pretty interesting, isn't it? It's a powerful, powerful story. I want to leave you today with a couple of thoughts from this story. Here's the first thing I want every one of you to know. Here's the first thing. First of all, no matter how bad your life is messed up, all right, you're not too far gone for the love of Jesus to reach into your life and change you for all eternity. Because so many of you think, oh, you know, God don't want anything to do with me. Man, he, he, he's a holy God. He don't want anything to do with me. And a lot of times you probably feel that way because of how church people have treated you. I don't know. But I want you to understand something. No matter how bad your life is messed up, no matter how many bad decisions you've made, <laughs> your life is not too far gone that it cannot be changed by the love and the power of Jesus Christ. He is able to reach into your life, no matter how messed up it is, and allow you to write a new future story. You say, how do I know that? Well, uh, we see the town outcast here, okay? Uh, I mean, she got a reputation, I guarantee it beats yours. Uh, everybody else would whisper about this lady. She would pass by and all, oh, everybody, the gossip stuff would start and people enthusiastically were, you know, putting her down and trying to just shun her and stay away from her, just continue her whole entire life. And here's this lady, she'd been changed by the gospel of Jesus and now she's out telling everybody this is the Messiah. This is the Messiah. This broken woman, this messed up woman, this woman that everybody talked about, everybody gossiped about, the one that has been called the immoral woman, immediately, under the guise of life change with Jesus, becomes an influencer. Isn't that incredible? Uh, you know what? Her story shows us you don't have to have it all together to influence somebody else toward Jesus. I mean, sometimes we think we have to know it all you know, before we'd ever share our faith. Uh, you have to have some kind of seminary degree uh, that you got to pray these big powerful prayers. You, you got to be able to quote Bible verses. She didn't know any of that. All right. She, she knew none of that. She had just had a transformation with Jesus Christ. And she goes and she tells her whole village. You don't got to be perfect, guys. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have things all fixed up in your life to be an influencer for Jesus. You just got to know Jesus. You, you just have to have a relationship with Jesus. And you just have to care about the people around you. And you can immediately be a light in this dark world. You can be the salt to those who are around you. You just have to care about people. You don't need 4,000 followers to have some kind of platform of influence. You don't, you don't have to have all these friends on Facebook. You just need to care about one person who's in front of you. You're an influencer today. Every one of you. You're an influencer. Listen to me. You don't have to know it all. You just have to let your light shine. Now, friends, you have no idea. Let me say it one more time. What one word of encouragement, what one word of hope, what one expression of love, how God might use you to influence another person toward him. Here's the second thing from this story I want you to get. You don't have to have it all together for God to use you. you know, sometimes we think, well, you know, I've got to join the church. I've got to get baptized. I think y'all do all them things, all right? I've got to get in a small group. I want you to do that too. But we think, maybe when I've been a Christian 10 years, then I might be able for God to use me. No, no, that's, that's not how it is at all. This woman, she, she becomes a follower of Jesus. She gets saved, right? And this woman goes back to her village immediately after her salvation experience, and she tells everybody what has just happened to her. 
Now, think about that. Does she know any theology? Absolutely none. Did she have any scripture memorized? No, she didn't have one verse memorized. She is a brand new Christian. She knew she had been forgiven. And she knew she was set free. And she loved the people who had shunned her and gossiped about her so much. That's the reason we know she truly had a transformation with Jesus, that she wanted all these people who had put her down for the majority of her life to find the same freedom that she found. Incredible. And Jesus says to conclude the story, the field is ripe for harvest, but the laborers are few. For our purpose, we might say it like this, that the field is ripe for harvest, but the influencers are few. And what I've come to tell you today is you're an influencer. The woman goes back to her town. She tells everybody, Verse 39 says, catch this, many Samaritans believed in Jesus that day. Many Samaritans. Why? Because one woman who was a brand new Christian was all of a sudden an influencer for Jesus. When they came out to see Jesus, really neat story, they begged him to stay longer in their village. Something about Jesus, man, you just want him to stay with you. And you know what Jesus did? He sort of delayed plans, and he actually stays two days longer. And he continues for two more days in that little village of Samaritans to share the transformation and the hope of the gospel, the forgiveness of sins. And the scripture says that almost everybody in that village became a follower of Jesus. Who did God use to make that whole village be changed? Was it a celebrity? No. Was it an Instagram star? No. Was it a professional athlete? No. You know who God used? Just a regular, ordinary, everyday, broken, sinful woman who had been redeemed by Jesus Christ. You have influence exactly where you are. You don't have to have your whole life together to have influence, to be an influencer for Jesus. Hey, let me say it one more time. You have no idea what one word of encouragement, what one expression of love can mean to someone to have a very small touch of God's love. So when you greet people, when they come to church and you help somebody who's uncomfortable. You remember what it was like when you came to church for the first time? I guarantee you they're a little nervous. They're a little uncomfortable. And you just love them. You're an influencer for Jesus. When you listen to somebody who's hurting at work and you represent the love of Jesus by not judging where they are, but you just love them, you're an influencer for Jesus. When you post something on social media, because I know so many of you are on social media and it's not the vitriol in which we see, but you share maybe a a sermon clip or a scripture or something like that that's positive and upbuilding and encouraging, you become an influencer for Jesus. Just by the way you worship, when we get together in person and, and man, you just know that you're here for an audience of one and you don't care what anybody else around you sees you doing and you just worship the God you love, (laughs) you're an influencer for Jesus. I would just say, let's not let culture define us from being an influencer from God. You are an influencer. You are the salt and the light and the hope of this world. And if you know Jesus, you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have the seminary degree. You don't have to be a preacher. Go and be an influencer this year in 2022. God wants to use you in a powerful way. Hey, let's pray together. Lord, I thank you so much for this story. It really helps me to know Jesus so much more that here's this immoral lady who Jesus dignifies. He doesn't come and judge her. He just helps her to see, you need a better story. I can give you a better life. If you drink from what I give, you'll never thirst again. And today, that same message, 2,000 years later, is still as vibrant. It's still as passionate as it was to her. 
I think as I'm speaking today, somebody on TV or somebody at home or in one of our in-person locations, you need to hear that. Your life is not so messed up that Jesus can't transform you. He is your hope. And you immediately, soon as you're transformed, can be an influencer for Jesus. Hey, I want you to grow. I want you to become a mature disciple. I want you to fall in love with his word. That's the reason we're going through the New Testament in 90 days. But I want to tell you something. Once you know Jesus, your greatest act of kindness to him is go share with others what he's done in your life. He's called us to be the light and the salt and the hope of this world. God, I pray for a generation that you would rise up at Highlands to be influencers. God, in our workplaces, Lord, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, may we be influencers for the lie of the gospel. And Lord, I pray that you might help us to understand that when the old devil comes, there's somebody here that thinks God doesn't want a thing to do with them that you've messed your life up too bad for God to ever save you. And I want to tell you, he went to the cross for you. He loves you. And if you will just simply say, Jesus, I have made mistakes. When I heard Pastor Allen talk about that woman, I look at my life and maybe I'm not as bad as what she was. But I'm telling you, I've made some horrible mistakes. But Lord, it gives me hope today that maybe you can forgive me. And I ask you, Jesus, come into my life today. I ask you to save me and forgive me. And God, help me to write a new future story, just like this lady in Scripture was able to write. I surrender my life to you today, Jesus. And thank you for loving me and saving me. And hey, if you're online today and you just made that decision to give your life to Christ, there's a little button there that says a raised hand. How about just clicking that raised hand so we can all along with heaven cheer what God's done in your heart today. And hey, everybody look up at me. If you are here today and you've realized that God wants to use you as an influencer, you go out today and you be an influence for the one who has saved you. Because man, that is the greatest thing we can give our life to. I love you. Look forward to an incredible year together. I, I just trust that God will use us in incredible ways that we'll see miracles among us. God wants to do so many things through you. Go and make this year a great year. In Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Hey, if you just made a decision to accept Jesus, we are celebrating with you. We are throwing a party. There is a party in heaven right now. And listen, it is the best decision you can ever make in your entire life. Like, that is not an overstatement, okay? And so you are just beginning the race. You are just starting. It's not the finish line. And we want to partner with you. We want to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. So please, if you're online, click the button. Say, I just surrendered my life to Jesus. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, leave a comment. Say, I accepted Jesus. If you're on TV, Go to the hub and let us know about your decision and we will reach out to you. We cannot wait to help you grow. This is a new year. Yeah. You are a brand new creation and this is the perfect time to make a decision to follow Jesus. It'll change your life. That's right. And whether you made that decision today or maybe 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, wherever you are in your walk, I know for me, this uh, last few years has really altered my schedule a lot <laughs> in that like sometimes I'm at home, sometimes I'm not at home, sometimes I have COVID and you know, they're like, it's it's been hard to get a routine and a rhythm. Them. And so as we were talking with our teaching team and some of our staff, Pastor Allen really just kind of put out this idea, what if we read through the whole Bible together? And I said, well, that might be a lot. What if we started with just the New Testament <laughs> together? And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the next 90 days and we are going to read the, the New Testament together in 90 days. And this is a really cool reading plan because, number one, it's chronological. Right. So we're not starting in Matthew 1 and reading just every page by page. And so we want you to participate with us because it's the easiest way that you're going to be able to sign up. Yep. Yep, so to sign up, yeah. where are you going to go? I, I think <laughs> I'm going to try the hub. First. Yeah, so here's the hub, right? So you can see Fred Flintstone here is logged oh, in. Yes. Good old Fred. Uh, so you click what's happening, right? And you're going to see the 90 days through the New Testament. Click that sign up button. Okay. It's going to take you straight to a link. It's going to tell you exactly what we're doing. Um, tells you about the podcast that we're partnering with, and we're going to be doing the Bible recap, which is awesome. And so every day, if you want to go a little deeper in your reading, there will be a six to seven minute podcast you can listen to every day, and it is incredible. 
Um, and also, you sign up, click this sign up button, okay. fill out that form, and let, let us know if you want to receive an email or a text. And when you receive that email or text, it'll have a personalized link just for you that you can click, and it will log you in, and it'll help you keep track of how you're doing on the reading, too. So That's it's going to be awesome. Yep. Yeah, so we're really excited about this opportunity. Please make the most of this. Uh, we're gonna do it with you, and hopefully we're gonna be creating some other content to go along with that to help encourage you to answer your questions. There's gonna be a way that you can comment on each one of those posts, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gonna be a great opportunity for us to really do this together. And here's what's really cool. I, Pastor Allen mentioned this, it's not just people from Highlands. It is people literally all over the world. We're partnering with all of our global partners as well. They're excited about doing this with us. So think about this, wherever you are, if you're watching in Kingsport, if you're watching in Grundy, if you're watching in Richlands, I don't know where you're watching from. You could be watching from Pakistan right now. There are people all over the world through our network that are gonna be reading the Bible together yeah. for 90 days. Uh, that's just, it's such a cool thing. And it is. I don't know what God's gonna do in 2022, but I wanna be a part of it. And I'm excited about the potential of what could happen. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.